Jackie Dixon also. And so on Fridays, you know, we're doing Food Truck Friday. And uh, it is hot outside, but you can get your food and you can uh, find a nice shady spot. And we also have, of course, our eating area where we have our Mr. Fans. And so don't let the heat deter you. Come on out to Food Truck Fridays. And uh, this Saturday, we're having two special things. We're having Saturday Sketch, like we usually do on the second Saturday of the month. And we're having Saturday Snap, since we have this amazing photography exhibition up right now. And um, so you can come and you can get advice on how to become a better sketcher or on how to become a better photographer. So we'll have an artist and a photographer. The photographer is going to be Brandon Dill. And if you get Memphis Magazine, you saw an article on Brandon in Memphis Magazine. He's a great photographer, so this is a great treat. It's from 11, it's from 10 to 11, and it's free. It's totally free. And on Sunday, this coming Sunday the 15th, is our opening lecture for In the Garden. And uh, that is going to be great also because Jamie Allen with the George Eastman Museum in Rochester, New York, is going to be down and doing that opening lecture for us. She is the associate curator in the Department of Photography. And um, on Tuesday, July 17th, instead of a tours at two, we're having a talk at two, and we're having a special book signing. And um, so come in because um, Garden District is going to be here doing a demo and a book signing. And it's a book that the title has left my head and I was not smart enough to write it down, but we actually carry it in our, did someone just say it back there? Fields to Florist. Field to Florist. To Florist to the field, something like that. But we carry it in our bookshop. So you can go ahead and get a copy of that and then come to the signing on Tuesday at two o'clock if you'd like to. And next Wednesday's Munch and Learn is going to be with Dick Preston. And he is former president of Memphis Ornological Society. That's how you say that. I was afraid I was going to have a hard time saying orn ornological. Ornithological. <laughs> Apparently, I just can't say anything today. And says he is going to do a talk on migration, the birds that are migrating through at this point. And on Thursday, July 19th, we've got so much going on. Uh, we've got uh, our opening for our Mallory and Wurzberger exhibition. And uh, we'll also have book club where they'll be discussing the language of flowers. And we'll have uh, sunset yoga at 6.30. So I'm going to hand it over to Dale now. <laughs> There's a lot going on here at the Dixon. Welcome all to, uh, to Munch and Learn. We are thrilled to have the extremely talented Kim Jamison. She, uh, she comes to us uh, as, uh, to help us with special events and flowers. She's actually on the Dixon staff now, so we're thrilled to have her on board. And uh, she's an amazing uh, floral designer. She, uh, speaking of the Garden District, she was a former manager of the Garden District, so she knows her way around uh, beautiful flowers for sure. Uh, today she'll be taking some beautiful flowers that we've grown here at the Dixon and putting them together in an arrangement. Um, as I said, she's extremely, extremely talented, and she had her own retail presence on South Main, a shop called Gestures that uh, she had that uh, was a floral shop and gift shop that she had on South Main. Um, she's also very active with a nonprofit that she started called STARS, and it's, uh, it's for students that are on the autism spectrum. And so uh, she's very active with that nonprofit, so we're glad to at least get her part-time here at the Dixon to help us with... Uh, with flowers for events and such. So with any further ado, I give you the amazing Kim James. Oh, thank you, Dale. Thank you all for being here. It really is an honor to work at the Dixon and work with the beautiful flowers. And this is such a great time to demonstrate flower design with you, using flowers from our garden, considering the uh, beautiful photos we have here for in the garden for our presence here. Um, again, my name is Kim Jamison, and I have been in the business since I was 13 years old. I really never stopped. I got out a little bit to finish up school and such, but I love floral design. I feel like I learn something every day, and I really like to share what I learn from people. So I, I often give a lot of tips to the trade, because in my opinion, I, it's why not share what you know with other people. 
you know. So don't ever hesitate to ask me any questions that you might have. No question. I don't think any question is silly. Every, every question is important to you. So feel free to ask me as we go through things, and uh, hopefully I'll know the answer. If not, we've got this expert here, Kim Rucker, who's, who does such a magnificent job of these flowers. These flowers. I, I started here in February, and I had you know, there weren't very many flowers blooming then. But I just can't believe all the work they put into flowers, and I'm just so proud to be a part of this. So I'm going to demonstrate a few different things today. The first thing is a hand tie bouquet, which may sound intimidating, but it's so easy. And there are different ways to do every technique I'm going to show you today. Um, so you may have learned different ways, but there's really no rule of which way is the best way. It's whatever you're most comfortable with. So the most important thing with a hand tie bouquet is to have all your flowers ready to go. Because you'll have your hands will be pretty full of holding the flowers. So you, it'll be hard for you to strip stems and such. So having the stems ready is key. Okay? So we're going to use a variety of hydrangeas from the Dixon Gardens. And there are different types of hydrangeas. I want you to feel comfortable going to your backyard or where, what have you to gather flowers and know that you can mix things up. But don't be afraid to mix different types of hydrangeas up. So after you cut your hydrangeas, they're going to look maybe something like this. So you're going to get every stem, so all of the hoods off. You can still keep some of the wood, but all of these side laterals are cut off. So that every stem is nice and clean. I also remove all, pretty much all the leaves, except for the top leaves. And I do that for several reasons. For one thing, when it's all tied together, those, those leaves are just going to get mushed together and they're not going to make any difference. There's going to be no presence of leaves. So you want to get rid of anything, anything extraneous. Also, the more leaves you have in the stem, the more nutrition that has to go to those leaves. So it's best to have a cleaner stem and the flowers will last longer because all the energy then can go to the flower head. Okay? And that's how you would take care of your hydrangea stem. And then I want to have a little greenery to add to it. And this is a, a dogwood that we have on the ground, it's a variegated dogwood that I'm also going to trim up. So don't be afraid to cut from trees too. You might think, oh, I'm going to cut from my flowers. You've got trees and bushes to cut from as well to use for flowers or for greenery. So I'm going to cut off these lower stems here. And if you have like little pieces, you may use it for something small to add a little base to put your powder in or something like that. But I'm just put these in the little trash here. So basically, everything I have ready to go. All the stems are clean. I've got some greenery here. I've got some beautiful lavender. And I've got a variety of hydrangeas. A lot of people ask me, do you, put, do, you do the flowers first or the greenery first? And the answer is, it depends. Well, that's a great question. So processing flowers, and I'll teach, I have a design class coming up in one in July, August, and September. I'll teach a lot more detail about processing flowers. But processing flowers correctly is the key to longevity, okay? So some of the products are, you really have to get through a professional florist or you can get online. But I highly recommend something called Quick Dip. And uh, it's, a, it's a solution you just put a little bit in the glass and just basically dip the end of the stem, freshly cut, dip the stem, and then put it in your, your water, your preserved water solution. And we actually sell the water solution here, the preserver here in the gift shop. Can that answer your question? It really does make a huge difference. So what I'm going to tie it with is this binding wire. And I'm going to cut a few pieces of this so that's ready to go as well. I usually forget to cut this early on. I'm like, oh shoot, I don't have it. So try to remember to cut whatever you're going to bind it with. I'm going to cut a couple of pieces because it probably will only use one, but sometimes if your bouquet gets so big and heavy, your hand might get tired. So you may need to tie it once and then add to that. Okay? So I've got a couple of pieces. I'm going to put them behind me. Okay. And I've also got my base ready. Now this arrangement I'm going to make, I could make it tall, I could make it low, I could make it whatever your occasion suits. For, for the size. So I'm going to make something kind of low and full. Do you mind if I set this here? So the flowers just kind of drape over. This is something you could put on a dining room table or a side table, a coffee table. But my base is clean. Always start with a clean base. And then you fill it with your preserved water. Okay. 
Now I'm going to start growing the hydrangeas. And this, this really is so fun to do, especially these big hydrangeas. I have a mixture of colors too, so don't be afraid to mix colors. Here we've got the lace cap. <laughs> now there are, like, the, the uh, European way to do a hand tie bouquet is much different. That is where the stems are all spiraled. And that's a whole other class, okay? So we're going to do the fun, easy way today. shape, whichever shape you prefer. And if you want, you can cluster colors together. These really drew me, these oak leaf hydrangeas. I'm going to say for the end, I'm going to put them on the sides because they look really pretty hanging over like that. shape to it. So now that I've got all the hydrangeas, I'm going to add the foliage to it. Put the foliage I'm going to put out to the sides. This also will help support your flower heads. So where I have this droopiness, if I place this underneath it, this nice strong woody stem is going to support the hydrangea. You know, this would be lovely just the way it is. It's got a full of hydrangeas and a few different foliages. To me, I think this is great. But if you want to add a little fragrance to it, this, this long stem of lavender is called my name. So this would be perfect to add to this. So instead of adding one stem at a time, which will take a while, it's also better to have clusters of flowers, especially when they're really dainty like this. So I'm going to grab four or five stems. I hold on to them tight as you feed them through. And also having these clean stems will help other flowers like this go through that center point.
going out with my designs, and I point this out often because I do feel this is very important, is you always go through this, there's an imaginary center point in all your designs, whether it's a hand tub bouquet or the arrangements I'm going to make next. Always imagine this imaginary center point, and you want all your flowers to go through that center point. They'll be at different angles, but they're still going through that center point, so they all kind of crisscross into that center point. It makes the arrangement just jump out. Now, there are exceptions to that rule with some designs, but for the most part, I use that rule quite a bit. Do you like the lavender in there? and tight here, and I have my fingers down low, and I'm getting my hands in there pretty good. I think a lot of it's practice too, but sometimes you just have to kind of jiggle it a little bit to get it through. I use real technical words like jiggle it, <laughs> and, and smush it, and stuff like that, you'll notice. <laughs> Once you put it in your vase of water, it's a snap to pull the flowers out, lay them next to your sink, put your fresh, clean the vase, put your fresh water in, get the stems a fresh cut, put them back in, and your arrangement will last twice as long. That's definitely a benefit. So now how short do I cut it? Cut it shorter than you think you're going to cut it. This may not be short enough. Thank you. 
little tubs of it in the gift shop. We might be getting low, but we'll be getting some more in. That's my standby. And I, I highly recommend using that. Make sure you follow the measurements correctly. If you use too much or too little, it's just not very helpful. So make sure you, like you get the little, little packets when you go to the grocery store with the flowers there. And it's only like for a quart, the little tea packages. So make sure you measure it correctly. Okay. Yes. Is there a minimum size? Like a proportion of it, of the floral? Are, are you referring to the proportion size? versus the flower arrangement. You know, I, well, as far as holding it, okay, I think I understand what you're saying. So if it's like this, there's different, there's different rules uh, that apply. You can either do it, if it's short and low like this, I usually at least, I'll the size the same side of the base and just wider. Or you can do it do more of a tall floral. It's usually the size of the height of the base, once and a half. So it really depends on the overall look. It's going to be a tall, slender floral, or it's going to be a low, full floral. Does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> All right, so yes.
So I'm sure you all can find some greener in your backyard there, right? And go for a walk. That's the easy one. Easy, easy way to remember it. I'm just trying to spread the love with the different foliages. There's no exact pattern I have going on in here. Something you all can do. needs to go 
know if we're upright. What do you think? Oftentimes, I, I get rid of most of the sunflower foliage because it's the first to go, and it looks awful once it starts to go. And the sunflower will last two, three weeks, right? But the foliage doesn't. I'm going to put this guy over here. Okay. All right, so I've got this down here. I'm going to put them, and I like to cluster them together. So I think clustering these two guys together will look good. Usually when I work with this, like I said, I start with the greenery, and I put in some of my taller, taller stems like this, and I work with my largest focal flowers. So the next large flower I have are these hydrangeas. They're not as big as the other hydrangeas in the other hydrangeas. You know, usually you have limited flower to work with, so you really want to use them to your best advantage. So I'm going to look at this arrangement and look at where I've got some big holes, like right there. Can you see that? And right there. So we're going to take care of those holes right now. Once again, these are going to go in lower because they're a larger flower. in this color. Once again, I'm using two different flowers that have the same shade, similar shades, to make those flowers more pronounced in the design. Too hot for me, but the other one's too low. <laughs> We're gonna get one that's just right. All right, so that's starting to take shape. You don't think you can do this, right? I mean, it's not that hard. It really isn't. Everything just takes a little bit of practice. I do have one more cluster of hydrangeas. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, 
Mommy Majas is in the Queen Anne's Lace family, in the Carrot family. Carrot family? I had no idea. The stuff you see growing on the side of the room, it's, it's just been um, bred to have that color in it. And it goes from anywhere from that dark egg-type color to almost a pale pink. Isn't that beautiful? And it's grown here in the next I am just amazed at the flowers that we get. They all look Kim and Deborah, Allison. I mean, just amazing. And the hard work that's involved. Okay, once again, I'm looking at the stem to see where it needs to go. I'm pulling out any greenery that you're not going to see. to have a lot of flowers, a lot of stems in your base. One thing you're going to notice that you need to do, because you may have a hard time getting it through, is you have to sometimes twist the flower to get it through. So when I sit the, sit, stick the flower through, I can literally twist it with my fingers to get it to go through. Okay? You all ever had that problem where you just can't seem to get any more flowers in but you need to? Do a little twist. Once that flower, the water level goes, your 
and toast, especially in this kind of weather. All right. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of some pickle and onion just to kind of pull some of the green in. I think I'll stop there now. I could keep going and adding more to it, but I just want to give the idea of what a, kind of a garden style asymmetrical shape looks like. And just have fun with it. Okay? This way, it would be nice to kind of keep that one. 